Afternoon, this is Mr. William, West Virginia. It's uh, December the 24th, which is Christmas Eve, 2018. What a year. What uh, The last part of this year has been horrendous. I, today, have been battling a spirit of depression that's trying to press me down, trying to get me off track, trying to keep me from praying, from doing anything that I'm supposed to do as a man of God. And quite honestly, it's just been hard today. It's been hard. But you know what? In the midst of of, of it being hard, I mean, yesterday the Lord just shared a, a really important word for me to kind of develop and think about. But as I was coming home from Walmart a little bit ago after going to get a heater for my son, his, his heater broke down in his room, so I had to go buy another electric heater. And um, on the way home, I just started thinking about Jesus, started thinking about his birth, thinking about the fact that, you know, we celebrate it tomorrow. The truth of the matter is he was born anywhere between March and June, probably, because the truth of the matter is that he had to be born as a lamb. He was he came to us as, as a sacrificial lamb. So he was literally born at the time when shepherds were out in the fields because they were waiting for lambs to be born and they had to be out there to watch them to make sure they were taken care of because these were lambs that they were using for sacrifice. So they had to be spotless and without any blemish. And so they had to, they had to be guarding to see who was going to birth a lamb and then, sw and then put them in swaddling cloth so that they would be okay. While the same thing was happening to the son of God, he was coming as, as the, as the lamb of God. And he was going to also be wrapped in swaddling clothes. But the funny thing about it is with all the hoopla, with all the angels that have spoken words to different men and different people, and with all the leading of, of the wise men two or three years later, and with everything that God was doing as far as instructing mankind, Joseph and Mary, who had been told that they were going to be giving, going to have the, a, a, a Christ child born to them, the Messiah born to them, had to get on a donkey and, and and go all the way to Bethlehem while she was pregnant. And when she got there, it was time to deliver. And there was no hoopla. There was no, oh my gosh, the king of man, the king, the king of kings is going to be born. Let's find him a really great place to be. Nobody cared. Nobody was looking for it. Nobody expected him. So he was born in a stable with animals around him. Born in a feeding trough. I find that funny because we're talking the son of God. He could have came anywhere he wanted to. Chariots of fire with angels around him could have brought him down to earth and could have presented him to the politicians and said, this is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Bow to him. And they would have had to. But no, he came quietly and peacefully. Just like he did when he was coming into Jerusalem to be crucified on a donkey peacefully. His mother came into Bethlehem on a donkey, peacefully. And he was born quietly with shepherds that were told to go and see him. And they came and they worshiped him. And you know, I got to thinking about the fact that life is just the way it was back then. Busy, 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 chaotic, stressful, depressing, political corruption, all kinds of crappy stuff that was going on now was going on back then. And yet Jesus was born to us, a savior for mankind. He came that we might have life and that we might have a more abundant life. He came that we wouldn't feel condemned, but that we would be connected to God the Father. He came to save mankind. He came to a planet where everybody is drowning and he's the only thing that can really save them from dying. And yet we still don't believe. We still don't accept him. And we've created Santa Claus and elves and, and reindeer and, and, and all these other things that we've created, a Easter bunny and Halloween. And we've, we've just created all this stuff that just clouds the issues and causes us to be distracted from the true meaning of what God wanted to do for us. And that's to bring love, unconditional love to this planet so that we would love him and so that we would be able to love one another. And we can't love without him loving us because we don't know love at all without him. God is love.
And the only way we can love is through him. I've had all kinds of people contact me today. Uh, and I've opened up to some of them. Some of them I didn't. But a lot of people just really cared today. Really uplifted me and prayed for me and declared a word over me and wanted me to get better. And I, I'm better than I was. But I'm not out of the woods yet because there's still so much stuff that's just trying to distract me and keep me from seeing clearly the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I don't celebrate Christmas like everybody else. I haven't bought one present for anybody this year. And I haven't done it in a long time. I'm a guy that buys what I think a child needs when he needs it. Or gives a gift when I think someone ought to get it. And I don't let society, I don't let what's going on around me tell me what I have to do. If I want to buy a rose for my woman, I don't wait till Valentine's Day. If I want to bless my children with something, I get it when I have the money and I get it. I don't let this one day frustrate me because it's being celebrated almost incorrectly. And we can try and redeem it and make it seem like it's what it is. But the truth of the matter is that we're celebrating it in the wrong time. We're celebrating it in the wrong ways. And we're expecting God to still move by his spirit and fix some things in our lives. And we wonder why it's not happening. It's not happening because we ain't happening. We ain't doing it right. We don't care to change it. We just want to go with the status quo. We want to follow the rudiments of this world. We want to keep doing the traditions the way everybody else is doing it because that's the way it's always been done. And then we wonder why life doesn't get any better for some of us. I've made a bunch of mistakes in my life and those mistakes haunt me. Those mistakes stay stuck in my head and in my heart at times. I'm, I, I feel guilt that I know is really Christ's. I, I feel condemned that I know that's Christ's. I feel completely frustrated because somehow in my mind, where I'm at right now is not where I planned to be when I was younger. But you know what? God still says that, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and who are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. So I know it can all work out and it may not even work out while I'm alive, but he's going to work this thing out to where everything is going to work out. And it may be frustrating for you right now. It may be very depressive for you, very depressing for you right now. It may be the hardest time of the year for you. But I want you to rejoice. And again, I say rejoice because Christ lives. He lives in us. And he can be living in you. As imperfect and as confused and as messed up as you might be, he still can come down. And just like he was born in a manger, come down and be born in you and give you new life. And there can be celebrations for the rest of your life. I ask you to keep praying for me because I'm battling, I'm fighting. And I, I'm not sure, I, I, I got out a little bit today, but I don't really feel like going anywhere else today. And I know we have a service at our church and I just, I just don't, I, I don't know what to do right now. But just kind of be still. I pray that you would learn how to be still and know that he's God. Because it's in that quietness, it's in that, it's in that sitting still and being wanting to be close to him that he draws close or, or, or somehow draws us close. I was, I was in the tub earlier and I was a song that was playing and I just kind of reached my hands up and said, Father, just reach down and touch me. Touch me. Reach down and touch me, Lord, because I need your touch. I need you to touch me, to heal me, to strengthen me and to get me back on track. And I'm sure some of you do too. And I pray that he touches you and gets you where you need to get. And you don't have to wait till the new year for it to happen. I pray deliverance would come. I pray recovery would come. I pray you would recover all that the enemy has tried to steal from you. And I declare deliverance from all evil that is coming against you right now in the name of Jesus. This is Mr. William, West Virginia. I'm battling. I'm fighting. I love you. But more importantly, God loves you. Shalom.